what's up everybody this is tech g back with another video and in this video we're going to be talking about the lightweight directory access protocol also known as ldap in case you have no idea what this thing is so let's go ahead and get into it the lightweight directory access protocol this is a critical component in the realm of network management and identity services it enables the efficient querying and management of directory services facilitating a range of applications from user authentication to network resource management and in this video we're going to talk about the fundamentals of ldap its architecture its operations security considerations and some practical implementations Exactly what is LDAP? Well, this is an open vendor neutral industry standard application protocol for accessing and maintaining distributed directory information services over an internet protocol network or an IP network. And directory services, this plays a crucial role in organizing and providing access to information necessary to manage network resources, users, and devices. All right, so let's quickly talk about the history and evolution of LDAP. So LDAP, this was developed in the early 1990s as a lightweight alternative to the directory access protocol, which was part of the X.500 directory services standard. And the goal was to simplify the protocol, making it more suitable for use over the internet and in less resource intensive environments. And since its inception, LDAP has evolved through several versions, each introducing enhancements and new features. And the most widely used version today is that of LDAP version 3, which was standardized by the Internet Engineering Task Force or the IETF. All right, so let's go over some of the key features of LDAP. So LDAP, this is designed to be flexible, scalable, and efficient. And some of its key features include the following. So it has a hierarchical directory structure. So LDAP directories are organized in a hierarchical structure, often represented as a tree of directory entries. And this structure allows for efficient organization and retrieval of information. It is schema-based. So LDAP directories are schema-based, meaning they follow a predetermined structure and set of rules that find the types of data that can be stored and the relationship between them. There's efficient querying. So LDAP supports efficient querying of directory information, allowing for quick retrieval of specific entries or attributes. LDAP also supports fine grain access control based on attributes, enabling secure and flexible management of directory information. And also LDAP is designed to be interoperable with various directory services and applications, making it a versatile choice for identity and access management. All right, so moving on, let's talk about the LDAP architecture. So the architecture of LDAP is built around three main components. And the first component is that of the directory information tree. So the directory information tree, this is a hierarchical structure of the directory consisting of directory entries organized in a tree-like fashion. And each entry represents an object such as a user, group, or device. It contains a set of attributes that describe the object. Then we have the LDAP directory servers. So the LDAP directory servers, they store and manage the directory information and they handle requests from clients such as querying and modifying directory entries. And then we have the LDAP clients. And these are applications or services that interact with the LDAP directory server to retrieve or modify directory information. And examples of this include email clients, authentication systems, and network management tools. Let's talk about how LDAP works. So LDAP operates using a client server model and the interaction between clients and the directory server. This involves a series of operations defined by the protocol. So here's an overview of exactly how LDAP works. So we have what is called binding. This process begins with the client establishing a connection to the LDAP server. And this can be done using simple authentication like a username and password or more secure methods such as SASL, which stands for simple authentication and security layer or SSL TLS, which stands for secure sockets layer, transport layer security. Next is the operations. So once connected, the client can perform various operations on the directory, such as search. So the client can search for directory entries that match specific criteria. And this operation is highly flexible, allowing for complex queries based on attributes and their values. It can compare. So the client can compare an attribute value of a different entry with a provided value to check for a match. It can add. So the client can add new directory entries. The client can also delete existing directory 
directory entries. The client can modify the attributes of an existing directory entry. And then the client, it can change what is called the DN or the distinguished name of a directory entry, effectively moving it within the directory tree. And then we have what is called unbinding. So after completing the necessary operations, the client closes the connection with the LDAP server. And once again, this is known as unbinding. All right, so moving on, let's talk about what the directory information tree actually is. So this is a hierarchical structure representing the organization of directory entries, and it is akin to a file system with a root entry at the top and various branches and leaves representing different directory entries. And each entry into the directory information tree is identified by a distinguished name, which is a unique identifier constructed from the entry's attributes. So let's talk about the distinguished name real quick. So a DN, this is a string representation of the path to a directory entry in the directory information tree. And it is composed of a series of relative distinguished names, each representing a single level in the hierarchy. So for example, a distinguished name for a user entry might look something like this, where you have UID equals JDO, the OU equals users, DC equals example, and DC equals com. So in this example, UID equals JDO, this is the RDN for the user entry and OU equals users. This is the RDN for the organizational unit that contains the user. And DC equals example and DC equals com. This represents the domain components of that directory. So here are some common directory entries. So we have users, and these are entries representing individual users, and they typically contain attributes such as a username, password, email address, and some type of contact information. You have groups. These are entries representing groups of users, and they are often used for access control and permission management. We have devices, and these are entries representing network devices such as printers, routers, and servers. And then you have what are called organizational units, and these are entries used to organize other entries into logical units such as departments or teams. All right, so moving on, let's talk about the LDAP schema. So this defines the structure and rules for directory entries. It specifies the object classes and attribute types that can be used in the directory, as well as the syntax and constraints for each attribute. So we have what is called an object class. So object classes, they define the types of objects that can be stored in the directory and the attributes associated with each type. And there are three main types of object classes. The first one is called structural. And these classes define the primary type of an entry, such as a person or an organizational unit. You have what is called auxiliary. These classes add additional attributes to an entry without changing its primary type. And then you have what is called an abstract class. And these classes serve as templates for other classes and are not used directly to create entries. There are also attribute types. So attribute types, they define the kinds of information that can be stored in an entry. And each attribute type has a name, a syntax, and a set of constraints. And common attribute types include what is called a common name or CN. Then you have a surname, you have the email address, and then you have the UID or the user ID. All right, so moving on, let's talk about LDAP security consideration. So security is a critical aspect of LDAP, especially when it is used for sensitive applications, such as user authentication and access control. And some key security considerations include the following. So the first one is authentication. So you want to ensure that only authorized users can access the LDAP directory. This can be achieved through various authentication mechanisms, such as a simple bind with username and passwords, SASL or SSL TLS. There's encryption, so you want to protect data transmitted between the LDAP client and server from eavesdropping and tampering. And SSL TLS, this is commonly used to encrypt LDAP traffic. Another consideration is access control. So implementing fine grain access control policies to restrict who can access or modify directory entries is important. And this is often managed through access control lists that specify permissions for different users or groups. And then we have auditing and logging. So you want to keep track of access and modifications to the LDAP directory for security and compliance purposes. And this involves configuring the LDAP server to log important events and regularly reviewing the logs for suspicious activity. 
All right, next, let's talk about implementing LDAP. So implementing LDAP, this involves several steps from setting up the directory server to configuring clients and integrating the applications. So here's a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to do this. So when it comes to setting up the LDAP server, the first thing you want to do is choose an LDAP server. So you want to select an LDAP server software that meets your needs and popular choices include Open LDAP, Microsoft Active Directory, and Apache Directory server. Then you want to install the server. So you want to follow the installation instructions for your chosen LDAP server software. And this typically involves downloading the software, running the installer and configuring basic settings. Then after you do that, you want to configure the server. So you want to set up the directory structure, define the schema and configure security settings. And this includes creating the initial DIT or the directory information tree, setting up authentication and encryption and defining access control policies. And then you want to go ahead and populate the directory. So you want to add entries to the directory, such as user accounts, groups and devices. And this can be done manually or through bulk import tools. And then after you do all of that stuff, you want to go ahead and configure the LDAP client. So you want to install LDAP client software. So you want to choose and install LDAP client software that supports your applications and common clients include email clients, authentication systems, and network management tools. Do you want to configure the client settings? So you want to set up the client to connect to the LDAP server. And this involves specifying the server address, port authentication method, and any necessary encryption settings. And then you want to test the connectivity. So you want to verify that the client can successfully connect to the LDAP server and perform the desired operations, such as searching for directory entries and authenticating users. And then after all of that is said and done, you want to go ahead and integrate LDAP with your application. So you want to identify integration points. So you want to determine which applications need to interact with the LDAP directory and how they will use the directory information. And common use cases include user authentication, access control, and directory lookups. You want to configure application integration. So you want to set up the applications to use LDAP for the desired functions. And this typically involves configuring the application to connect to the LDAP server, specifying search filters and mapping directory attributes to application specific fields. And then you want to go ahead and test and validate. So you want to ensure that the applications can successfully interact with the LDAP directory and that the integration works as expected. And this includes verifying that users can authenticate, access control policies are enforced, and directory lookups return the correct information. All right, so after you've done all of that, now it's time to troubleshoot LDAP if you ever experience any issues. So despite its robustness, LDAP can sometimes encounter issues that do require troubleshooting. And here are some common problems and troubleshooting steps. So some of the common issues that you're gonna come across are connection problems. And this is when the client cannot connect to the LDAP server. They're gonna have authentication failures where users are unable to authenticate to the LDAP directory. They're gonna have search failures where searches return incorrect are no results, and then you're going to have some schema errors. And this is where entries fail to add or modify due to schema violations. And here are some troubleshooting steps that you can implement to fix all of that stuff. So first thing you want to do is verify network connectivity. So you want to ensure that the LDAP server is reachable from the client and you can use tools like ping or trace route to check connectivity. Next, you want to check LDAP server logs. So you want to review the LDAP server logs for error messages or warnings that might indicate the cause of the problem. You want to test with various LDAP tools. So you can use tools like LDAP search, LDAP add, LDAP modify, and LDAP LDAP delete to manually perform operations and verify the server's responses. You also want to verify authentication settings. So you want to ensure that the authentication settings are correct. Check the bind, DN, and credentials used by the client and ensure they match what is configured on the server. You also want to review access control policies. So check the ACLs to ensure that the appropriate permissions are set for users and groups. You want to validate schema definitions. So you want to ensure that the schema definitions are correct and that the entries conform to the defined schema. And you can use tools like LDAP check to validate the schema. Then you also want to use debugging tools. So you want to enable debugging on the LDAP server to get more detailed information about the operations being performed. And this can help identify where the process is failing. 
All right, so let's move on to some practical applications of LDAP. So LDAP is used in a variety of scenarios to manage and secure network resources. Here are some practical applications. So obviously we're gonna use this thing for user authentication. So it is commonly used for centralized authentication and applications and services that can authenticate users against an LDAP directory, allowing for single sign-on and consistent access control across multiple systems. And an example of this would be an organization that uses LDAP to authenticate employees accessing corporate resources such as email, intranet, and file servers by storing user credentials in an LDAP directory. The organization can ensure that users have a single username and password for all services. Then there's the aspect of access control. So LDAP directories, they can be used to manage access control policies. So by defining groups and roles within the directory, administrators can control which users have access to specific resources. And an example of this would be a company might use LDAP to manage access to different parts of its network. So users in the IT group might have admin access to network devices or users in the HR group might have access to employee records. Then there's directory lookup. So LDAP directories are ideal for storing contact information and other directory data, making it easy to look up users, departments, or devices. An example of this would be an LDAP directory that can serve as a corporate phone book, allowing employees to search for colleagues, contact information, job titles, and department details. And then there's network resource management. So LDAP can be used to manage network resources such as printers, servers, and workstations. And this includes storing configuration details and managing device access. And an example of this would be an organization might use LDAP to maintain a directory of network printers and employees. They can search the directory to find the nearest printer and admins can manage printer configurations centrally. And next, let's talk about the future of LDAP. So as technology continues to evolve, LDAP remains a relevant and valuable protocol for directory services. However, new trends and technologies are influencing its development and use. So there's the aspect of the integration with cloud services. So with the growing adoption of cloud services, LDAP is increasingly being integrated with cloud-based identity and access management solutions. This allows organizations to manage both on-premise and cloud resources using a unified directory. And an example of this would be a company that might integrate its on-premises LDAP directory with a cloud-based service like Azure Active Directory, which will enable seamless authentication and access control across both environments. Then there's the component of enhanced security features. So as cybersecurity threats evolve, there is a continual need to enhance the security features of LDAP. And future developments may include stronger encryption methods, improve authentication mechanisms, and more robust access control models. An example of this would be LDAP implementations that might adopt newer encryption standards like TLS 1.3 and integrate with advanced authentication technologies such as biometrics or multi-factor authentication. Then there's interoperability with emerging standards. So LDAP will continue to evolve to ensure interoperability with new standards and protocols. And this includes supporting modern data formats and integrating with other directory services and identity management solutions. And an example of this would be an LDAP directory that might support JSON or other modern data formats to facilitate integration with web applications and microservices architectures. And then we have machine learning and AI. So machine learning and AI is transforming how directory services are managed and utilized and integrating LDAP with AI-driven tools. This can enhance directory management, automate routine tasks, and provide predictive insights. And an example of this will be an AI algorithm that can analyze LDAP access patterns to detect anomalies, predict potential security breaches, and automate access control adjustments based on user behavior. All right, so to wrap all of this wonderful information up, the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, also known as LDAP, this is a cornerstone to network management and identity services. Its ability to efficiently query and manage directory information makes it indispensable for applications ranging from user authentication to network resource management. And by understanding the fundamentals of LDAP, its architecture, security considerations, and practical implementations, network admins and IT professionals can leverage its full potential to enhance their network operations. 
And as the technology landscape evolves, LDAP will continue to adapt, integrating with cloud services, enhancing security features, and embracing new standards and protocols. And by staying informed about these developments and following best practices for LDAP implementation and management, organizations can ensure robust, secure, and efficient directory services for their users and resources.